Hey, what's going on, Mindsight Warriors? Another day of learning awaits us all. You are on it with Hurdles University Conversation with Mindsight Maximizers. And today we have a fantastic guest. So come on in the room, come on in the room, come on in the room. It's going to be on and popping in just a few seconds. So uh, I'm your host, John Register, and I'm an international keynote speaker, a change mindsight warrior, and I work with successful uh, business leaders to amputate their fear embrace a new normal mindset to actually win the medals that are in their lives. I believe that mindset is a place that we actually are, a uh, point in time. Mindset is actually where we desire to be. It's the destination of where we're going to. So this show is where you get up close and personal to courageous conversations uh, and dynamic dialogues with Mindsight Maximizers. So go out and visit my website, johnregister.com, to get all my social media handles and to continue the conversation that we're going to have. Last week, Today, ACS. So I just finished up a program with the Army Community Services. Uh, we did a whole training around this. It was fantastic today. Just came back and jumped to the seat uh, for my, my guest. I had to be over here for her today because she is just awesome. Um, HSMAI, so Hospitality Management Systems uh, of, the, of the sales professions. Uh, th those people were hit so hard during the pandemic. It was just, uh, it was crushed. The entire industry just went down, but they're fighting back right now so we have another conversation about how we embrace a new normal mindset so what platform you're on what, what are you about to do we have so many things that you got to talk about but we'll get to it later um we have the stuff like the juneteenth that's coming up this weekend gilead new higher training programs that are happening uh and this podcast team is going to make all these podcasts out of the, all these shows which i can't wait for that to happen because uh we've had some extraordinary talent some extraordinary people that are on just sharing and gifting of their time their attention their resources to all of us and I'm so grateful for them. So all shows are out there on YouTube, LinkedIn, and the Facebook group. So please go out there, hit that subscribe button so that you can be around as well. So all of you that aren't familiar with me, I, of course, was the, the world-class athlete, had an injury in 1994, amputated my left leg, uh, ended my Army career and my athletic career, and then wound up coming back to win a silver medal in the long, in the long jump in Sydney, Australia, on one leg. Uh, and so now we talk about how we actually amputate fear and embrace a new normal mindset. So here we go. Uh, each guest in the show has done similarly because they have pushed forward. Uh, if you remember, after I, I had the amputation, I came back uh, and then worked with um, the United States Olympic Committee and built out the Paralympic Military Sport Program. That program turned into Warrior Games and then Warrior Games into Prince Harry's Invictus Games. So it's been great uh, just to see the programs actually actualize and grow. And we have to thank all of our people that are on, the Lynn Kears of the world, the Diana Parkers, Patrice Ravenscroft, Richard Biddles, all of you folks that are just continue, continue to support this show. So I'm rushing through this because I got to get to my guest. Oh, my gosh. I just can't believe she, she even said yes. So I'm so thankful for that. So please share this on your platforms. Watch from your chat boxes and everything. Uh, and if you have a few guests that you want to know that you want on the show, please DM me so that we can get them on. All right. So about our guests, let's meet her. Um, she is the creator of Shanetics, a value-based doctor-endorsed lifestyle practice that has earned her the nickname America's Queen of Wellness and the acclaim of the city of Chicago and the Department of Public Health. I'm a Chi-Town guy, West Side, over there in Oak Park, Illinois. She is also an award-winning entrepreneur who is committed to getting women seen and heard. She founded Women on TV, which today under the new banner of Worldwide TV Network, or WWTVN, also includes the Faith in Family TV and worldwide TV network channels, which command an audience outreach of over 50 million households through Roco TV, Apple TV, and other major OTT platforms. So please welcome the woman who can do an eight minute plank with one arm, America's Queen of Wellness, the one and only Shay Vaughn. Hey, welcome. How you doing? Oh, I'm just so excited, John, to be on the show. You have you have really talked to so many and interviewed so many influencers and talent and, and all of those great things. I'm glad I have such gratitude to be here. Well, I am so thankful that you said yes. Um, I've been wanting to talk to you for a long time. So, so thank you for gracing us. And I know that we have a little problem with your, um, uh, your picture but uh, in your video, but we're going to put the picture up. So we got it going on right now. I'm pushing that out because we have to look at your lovely face. So there we go. Uh, oh, you want to see that. Um, you know, so I'm, it's great to have you here. You know, you've had so many accomplishments. So I want to start off by just saying, you know, what, what are you most proud of in business and in life? 
What are you most proud of? I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Yeah, so, you know, you've had some of the accomplishments in life. What are you most proud of in business and in life? Oh, you know what? Family. Uh-huh. Always family first before any business or anything like that. Yeah. I mean, I am so blessed. I have, you know, three children, Victoria, Valerie, and Vince, and they each have two kids, and they are just the heartbeat of my life. And even if they they made a phone call to me right now, because they do come first, I would pick it up and then get right off if it was something that that I didn't need to you know talk to them about. But you know, I think that when you really feel that way about family and whatever, you just like anything else in business or whatever, you've got to make it first. You've got to you know you've got to put your love and care and all of those things into it because I, you know the, the wonderful thing about it is it comes back just you know three times bigger than what you you've ever given. You know, I think that that's, and I, I love that. And so my grandbaby's on the way right now from Texas to uh, the house to be with her fafa. I'm her fafa. Uh, and absolutely everything stops uh, when she arrives because, you know, that's what we say. But a lot of people were saying that, you know, during, uh, before the pandemic had hit. And I think we found out what our actions were, if they were aligning or not aligning with our words. Did anything actually change for you? in that relationship uh, for, you know, during the pandemic? No, I have to honestly say that it got stronger. That's great. Because we spent, we really did spend more time, you know, talking to each other and doing things and, and, and things like that. Um, I'm, I'm blessed because my kids are all close to me. Um, they're like four blocks away. Um, to awesome. us. Yeah, I mean, you know, and it might sound like, well, you might be, you know, with each other all the time. It's not. They've got kids that are going to school and whatever. But when they have events and things that we have to go to and want to go to, um, you know, there's all these graduations and things that are coming up. So I have my first uh, uh, um, uh, child that is now uh, getting out of, of, of school and going to college and all of these things that are going on in, in his life, his name's Dexter. And, um, oh my God, he's, I just could tell you a million things about each one of my kids. But, you know, all of these things are great because he is 17 and then the youngest is eight. And wow. those, and they're, they're the bookends, right? The oldest and the youngest, and then four girls in between. And these are just amazing. They're good kids. They, they, you know, get all get A's, and they, you know, they're just kind and good and and whatever. And, you know, I don't really give myself so much credit for it. I'm just gratitude. <laughs> just yeah. they turned out to be the people that they are. They're amazing. Yeah, I, I, I certainly understand that. My, my grandbaby is eight too, so I, I, I totally oh. get it. And she runs the household when she gets. Yes, yeah, she does. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely runs the household. <laughs> um, so and, and so i kind of go to the end first and then uh, we'll work our way back to this is, is is what what is there still left for you to do i mean we we talked about your introduction all these amazing accolades that you have done business wise uh what's still left for you to do what what is like unfinished that oh i got to i got to get that done if i have that done to be and everything will be just fine That is a great question. And here's what I'd have to say to anyone that's out there Mm. that built businesses of their own, just like like you have and all of the talent that you've interviewed. And you're not done. No matter where you are um, that day, there is always something greater that you want to do to help other people. And that's really what it becomes. It becomes all the work that we've done so hard and then it's our turn to, you know, the one thing that we actually share on this earth is no matter what people think or whatever, doesn't make any difference. We are here to help each other. And mm. so I can think of a hundred things that I want to do seriously, especially where the networks are concerned. And I'm really excited about that because um, there's so many things that now we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing our own um, series, uh, productions, all of those things, and uh, really helping people to have a, a distribution opportunity uh, to be able to get their voice out. You know, everybody out there, they may not be a celebrity, but there's definitely a star. 
and and they just need a platform to make that even grow bigger. You, you know, one of the things that you said that really resonated with me is, and I frame it around uh, legacy. Uh, so I, when I'm usually talking and speaking to a group, even today, you know, I was saying that what's I have this whole journey from fear to freedom. Uh, and once we get to our freedom, our liberation through our most challenging moments of when our truth actually outweighs our fear, we'll commit to a courageous life. Uh, once we kind of have, have kind of done it, I asked the group today, you know, so, so what's the next thing? What do you do after that? And they were all him and hawing around it. And I said, and somebody finally said it. And that is to go back and teach somebody else. And exactly. I said, that's it. Legacy exactly. is it. Well, you know, and when people think about legacy, they think they have time to to kind of get that down. It's, you know, they, you know, to, to do that. But what they don't realize, it's not about the time. It's right. legacy is every day of your life, every second of your life. What, what choices are, are you making right then and there? That is what your, your legacy is. I mean, I, it's like we're kindred spirits, right? <laughs> I, can just, I, I, I just love it. Uh, yeah. Uh, when when you when did it come? When did you first realize that drive? Kind of what, what did you have an inspirational moment around it that led you to the motivational acts that you did? But but when was it that you said, you know what, I have something to offer this world, and this is where I'm, this is the direction I believe I'm called to do to do the work that I I I, I um I believe I'm called to do. I think that it didn't come. Um right away where I was concerned as I was at eight years old, I was, um, my mom put me in dance because I was jumping all over and doing flips all over and whatever, I was a gymnast. And so um, when she did that, I just, I was actually put into a team and traveled all over and performed. Oh, I thought I was the cat's meow. I mean, I'm eight years old and I'm doing what I'm loving to do. And, um, and the things that come out of those things, uh, when those things happen, is that as you get older, you realize that certain things are going to be organic for you. Mm. And if you can listen to what you love, listen to your heart, do the things that, that, that help other people. I mean, I, younger, I was like, it was all about me. And then when I got a little bit older, it was kind of like, well, maybe it's about the team. I'm just about, I don't want to go past that, you know? That was just too much for me to give that much away. And then I really grew up and, and, and realized that, um, you know, it's, it's, about, it's about everybody else. And you're just coming into their life and they're coming into your life so that they can either help you or you can help them. And... Um, it, well, I was just going to say to you, so one yeah. of the things that was that really brought me into health and wellness and all of that was because it was or, organic for me to go into health and wellness and nutrition and fitness and all of those things. And I got certified in everything you could possibly think about. Um, and the brand, which is Shaynetics that you met, mentioned, um, that was, you know, I put that together and actually on this on the um, physical side of that combines yoga pilates tai chi uh, martial arts show kinesis dance ballet just just about everything out there and being able to put those things together makes it fun all the time because it's new but at the heart of it is five principles of wellness and mm -hmm. success and those are commitment perseverance self control integrity and love and people always say to me why is love the five that uh, you know why isn't first well the truth of the matter is if you don't do the work if you're not committed to do it if you're not honest with yourself and if you're not willing to realize that only you can do it you're never going to get to the love mm. and when you do that and you see that because you've you've put it all into that that feeling of loving yourself because you did it is beyond anything else that you could get. I want to I want to uh, unpack that just a little bit because that's a, that's a mouthful you just said. We were talking with Siobhan, creator of Shaynetics, um, and you just mentioned these five. Uh, what would you call them? Five. Um, five, five principles. Five principles, five principles of wellness and was, success. Because when you have good health you're going to have success. And so you said commitment, and the second one was? 
Perseverance. Perseverance. Self-control. Self-control. Integrity. And then love. Mm -hmm. So, and I and I and I heard you how we unpack how you unpack love. What do you think is like the next one that people struggle with the most when they're trying to put these 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 successes of wellness uh, together? So can I ask you a question back before I say that? Because I'd love to see what you want to say with this. Yeah. So you know the five of these. Give me the two things on here that you think is the most, you know, hard, hardest thing to do. What do you think? Uh, I think uh, commitment is one and uh, self-control. Okay. Well, you're absolutely right. Because if you did anything that you, other than uh, commitment, if that didn't come first, you're never going to do the other ones. And yep. that's the truth of it. So if you're not committed to make something, you know, work for you, you've got to take it serious. Think about New Year's, everybody making a New Year's, you know, commitment. Mm -hmm. And two weeks later, it's all gone. But here's the crazy thing about it. The crazy thing about it is that the next year you do the same thing. Right. You already know that you're not going to do the work. So who, who are you kidding? So you're not committed. You have to be committed, like paying your, your, your rent or your, you know, insurance. Or if you had a kid and you had to pick them up at a certain time, let me tell you, you'd climb the, mo the mountain. You would do anything, but you would be there on time. That's the kind of commitment that you need in anything that you do in your life. You know, the amazing thing, Shay, is um, when I think about the commitment, and I'm, I'm smiling right now because, you know, having all these conversations with, with, with phenomenal people, including yourself, is the, the commitment is all, always comes up. It's, it's, it's like a, a weaving thread throughout the entirety of all these, uh, these live events, these live shows, uh, that people... Um, so the, the kind of way I explained, I, I call it the jump is the jump or the jump is your jump. Yes. So I, I can help you. You can help a person. You can give them all the tools that they need. You can give the 10 points of this, the five points of that. But until they make the commitment to actually jump, they will always live on this kind of what I call this fear side. Fear right. of other, other people believing for them what they can or cannot do, which generally is based on what the, that person believes they could or could not do if they were in their situation. Uh, or and the, the 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 place of society so societal's impact so um when i had my amputation um one of the you know one of the things i was always thinking about was am i it wasn't it was people if people were going to leave me it was is am i still desirable uh am i still valuable am i still of worth uh was it when i watched why did those things come in in society what Society ways. It was when I watched the Walt Disney movie and I see Captain Hook. Captain Hook's an amputee. He's he got his arm bit up by TikTok the crocodile. Uh, he's dark. He's mysterious. He's scary. Uh, he's he's chasing the Lost Boys in Peter Pan. But wait a minute, I'm now an amputee. Am I the one that's dark and mysterious and scary? And is that why you know people, moms and dads, say to their children when they see me in the grocery store, uh, "Let's go down another aisle. We don't want to disturb him. We don't want to bother him. It's impolite to stare." Right. Um, and so they run away. And so now they, they've just learned that I'm Captain Hook. I'm the one to be feared. Yeah. It was, it was even more visceral when I was doing, when I was doing work at Brook Army Medical Center, which is the home of the burn victims, soldiers, um, survivors. And, you know, after they get all this scrubbing done and then they get back to, um, the semblance of the scars that are still left. Now they're sent home. They're across the table from their wife and their children. Do not do they now see themselves as the Nightmare on Elm Street that Freddy Krueger comes up and and so I, I see all these things in society how we push and it 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 presses upon us these fears that stop us from making the commitment as you so eloquently stated. How have you seen people do that in those that you may coach or those that you speak to? that holds them from actually making the jump to the commitments that, that they know they need to make and you know they definitely need to make? Well, I think there's a couple of things. And I want to say first and foremost, that was wonderful what you just said. Every single word that you had. 
um, was, you know, is, is just how it is. And, uh, and I thank you for that. Um, I, as far as fear is concerned, I, you know, I think that people tell themselves it's not fear when it truly is yeah. um, because they're not willing to say, well, I'm, I'm just too, fr too afraid to do this. They're, they're looking for some other reason why they're not doing it. I don't have the money to do it. I don't, I don't have the time to do it. Ain't everybody t t tells you that they don't have time to do something that's going to help them to be, you know, better in everything that they're doing. We know that's an excuse. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. Absolutely. So in, in, in helping other people to realize that we need to be, um, we need to be so honest and get them to that. Cause the, you know, the third one is, you know, I mean, the fourth one is integrity and yes. the truth of it is if we can get them to be, ask themselves, you know, how honest they are because they're not being honest to themselves. They don't even look at it that way. Okay. But be just if you could get them to say, I'm afraid, then you're halfway there to get them through the fear. Yeah. Because they already know it about them. And they can then you can give them tools that's going to help them to get through that. And the, a lot of those tools is what do you have to lose? Because if you don't do what it is that you need to do and what you truly want to do and fear is holding you back, you're giving up on yourself. And the only pre reason that you don't succeed at any business, anything that you're doing is because you do end up, you know, being the person that just walks away of yourself. You're giving up yourself. Nobody is doing that to you. It's not happening from some someplace else. It's coming from within. Do, do you also think, this is just thinking about here now, um, if you don't do, of course, it, it's just not going to get done. But what what happens if you delay it? Well, that's you know that's the big thing too. That why are they? You've got to get to the why on yeah. all of those kinds of things. Why are they delaying it? And in some cases, seriously, there's a reason to do that. Maybe yeah. there's a you know a, a mom or dad that you're taking care of, or certain things that just don't you know provide the opportunity to do it now. And that's that's fair. But when somebody once again says, you know, that I need to, you know, to wait a while or do that, I want to always know why. Yeah. Why do you want to do that? And mm -hmm. there's so many times when asked that question in a kind way, like you, because I want to help, is that they don't know. They're just saying it. They don't really know well. It just doesn't feel right because the fear is still there. Yeah. Wow. Y'all, this is this is some wisdom richness that you're hearing right now. I hope you're all paying attention. If you have a question uh, for um, uh, Ms. Shavon, please put in the chat. And, and also, uh, you know, you know, her handle that's out there. Put it in the chat box. What are you learning right now? Continue to uh, shout her out. This is fantastic. We're talking with Shavon, founder, CEO, Worldwide TV. WWTVN uh, and all the acronyms of ABC Elemental P, uh, just fantastic conversation. So we're gonna, I'm gonna um, kind of shift just a little bit and talk about, uh, and, and invite you to talk about, you know, some of the pro the projects. So you, we, we talked a little about Shaynetics, um, um, and, and that's great, you know, and all those, those things. But it's it's really the, the, the your process, right? I'm interested in the process of how you evaluate what the next thing might be. So you, you have the vision, you're about to commit to it, your, your, your truth has outweighed the fear, and now you're ready to jump and turn it on. What's that process for you for evaluating next projects? I think it's about really putting a plan together that you write down. And it doesn't mean that you can't change things as you, you know, move forward. But you need something that gives you uh, the tools to be able to say, okay, this is what I need to get done. And let me just share with you uh, one of the first things that I always do when I go, okay, I'm going to make this work and I'm excited about it and I'm committed to doing it and I'm going to persevere through it. I'm going to, you know, I know that I'm going to, uh, I need me to do it because not somebody, maybe somebody else isn't going to show up to help me. You know, I might have to do it all on my own and that's okay. 
Um, and I'm going to be honest with myself. This is not going to be easy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that, that's part of it. But you do need to, a plan. And first, my first thing that I always do is um, I just ask for, for God's uh, guidance. Uh, that's number one. And then number two is really putting a plan together. And to me, I, I'll go back to the five principles because those things, if you put them into what everything that you're going to do, okay, I'm committed, but what am I committed about? What is it I want to do? Okay, how do I get through this? What are the, what are the things that I need to, to, to put together and, and persevere through this to be able to get that done? And then realize you're going to have to work. Look at the entrepreneurs that wake up on their on their couch the next morning because they had so much work and things that they needed to get together. And they just, you know, they put the time in to do that. And sometimes we have to do just like we did when we were in college. And that's, you know, do a nighter. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? It just I love it. when you get older and you're working, it's the same thing, you know. You've got to get it. You've got to get it done. So you need that, and you need a team. And sometimes that's a that's a tough thing to to find. Um, I can tell you some of my biggest failures is people that I've trusted and um, and didn't end up, you know, really coming through. But the other side of that. Is that if you yeah. just let that eat you up and, and just be miserable about it, you just need to let that shoe fly away and just know that there is somebody out and the next person that comes along, maybe you ask a little bit more questions, look things up. Make sure, you know, that um, that this is going to be, you know, a, a partner with you in some way. And collaboration. So there's three things that I always think is so important that I that I look at. And I call it the three C. So connection is number one. Collaboration is even more. And communicating. I mean, most people do not have the, um, the talent or the um, tools to be able to, if they have a business or something like that, and you ask them what they do, have you ever had that experience where 15 minutes later they're still talking? You have no idea what to do. <laughs> Are you talking about me? Are you no, talking about me? I'm not. You're not one. But I mean, you, you, they've got a lot of talent. What they haven't done is that they haven't put that, you know, that quick little um, speech uh, together so that people can understand what they do. So that why, and you, everybody should know what their why is, okay? And my why is, is that I give a voice to entrepreneurs and influencers and, 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 and small businesses to give them a broader audience so that they can take their message globally. So now they don't know everything about me, but they get it you know, and it didn't take 15 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and it's it, it takes time to get there, and I there's so many things on back. I'm, I'm like I got a whole page here. I don't know if you can see it, but all these notes I'm just writing on my paper uh, because it's, it's so rich. It's so it's so good. A written plan. Uh, our people perish because a written plan is not written down. Um, uh, you know, when I think about you know what I what makes me tick, it's I always want to hear my God say, "Well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter the joy of my rest." So then, therefore, what am I doing before that? Uh, that's going to push me towards that end. So every day I want to serve. I want to serve other individuals because I believe I'm a steward over everything that is in uh, under my care um, and not an owner of it because I can't take anything with me. So that kind of just puts me in a different mind state, mind sight uh, for, for everything. When you're talking about connection, collaboration, communication, oh my gosh, you know, sometimes, you know, people have to have all these misstarts but you say, you know, keep on doing it again and don't fall to the fear trap. Uh, the next person is just coming along. Uh, and then, you know, finally, I think, you know, always doing things with God's guidance. Uh, and and it's, it's we think it's going to be easy once we make the commitment. But that's really when the work happens. That's when the yeah. assessment happens. They work. This is going to be tough. This is going to be this is going to be hard. Um, when, when you look at this and you have um, you got your eight year old there, uh, grandbaby and, and, and just just uh, rock in. Uh, sometimes, you know, we hear, 
you know, is it still the same when you create, you know, Shane Eddix and you see their vision? Is it still the same in what you tell others? So sometimes kids will say, like at least my kids will say, oh, dad, we know that, dad. Uh, how come we're still talking about this, dad? You know, do you get that kind of pushback either from your kids or from uh, or from your, your grandkids? It's like, yeah, we know we, we got to keep on doing it. And it's like, oh, my gosh, one more time. Yeah. You know, it's so true. I'm, I'm listening to you and I go, yeah. But you know what <laughs> the matter is, is that they do need, you know, to hear it. They do. Yeah. And I think sometimes when we can get our voice just a little bit less loud and we say it in a different way and come back to them, they know you're serious about it. But and, and I think it's OK to say, I know that I've said it a number of times, but I love you so much that I know that this is important and you're going to use this as you grow up. Yeah, that's it's so good. So good to hear from that perspective. You're, you're, I mean, your children are fantastic. They do great work. Uh, you, you, you and your husband have done a fantastic job in just raising them. Um, and which is not always the case, right? You know, we can do a fantastic job raising them, and they still choose a different path that that comes uh, for for them once they get older. Um, so we're talking with Shayvon, a bestseller, can speaker, health and fitness authority. All right, we're gonna we're gonna switch gears one more time, and I'm going to go into this what I call the rapid ten, the rapid ten. So these are just ten questions I'm going to ask you. They are really simple. They're really easy. It's, they don't take any thought. Um, and you can push back on them, but it's, 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 they're, they're very simple. They're, you know, there's nothing, there's no shockers or anything inside of it. So are you ready for that? I am ready. Ready. Okay, here we go. All right. Number one, meat or tofu? Tofu. Well, neither one. Neither one. Okay. Favorite pizza topping? Uh, don't eat it. When no one is looking, what is a snack you will sneak? Um, some pretzels, maybe. Animations or cartoons? Both. Love. Skydive or bungee jump? I've all jumped out of a plane. Awesome. Me too. Uh, how do you explain what you do to an eight-year-old? I got that question. This, so we got your eight-year-old. How do you explain what you do? <laughs> how do I explain things to them? Yeah, to a two year old. Very, very slow and little <laughs> and little words. <laughs> <laughs> and make them laugh at the same time because that's the most important thing. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> I, I think I know the answer to this next question, but I want to ask it anyway. Plain MMs or peanuts? I'm sorry, what was the first one? Plain MMs or peanuts? Um, I'll take the ones with the covered uh, chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I can, I can eat three of, I'll see eat three of those, and that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> what you had for breakfast this morning? I don't eat breakfast. I don't actually eat until any time between eleven thirty and twelve o'clock. So that's your breakfast. Um, I just have water, and um, that's it. Oh, we're good. I don't, okay. eat, I don't I, yeah, I don't, I never have. I'm not a girl that gets up and go, oh, I'm hungry or whatever. Everybody's different. And, and, and saying that your, your, your breakfast is the most important, but I think that, I think that you eat, you should be eating when you're hungry and yep. not doing it when you're not. So that's, that's a false, yeah, that's a false um, thing that you got to get up and eat. That's not true. Yeah, I just, I drink, I drink a lot of water when I get up in the morning as well. Yes, um, exactly. Uh, okay, last two. I can't believe you just did that. What's the that? What's the what? What's the that? I can't believe you just did that. What is the that? Oh, what is that? I just keep saying the same. You've said the same thing back and forth. <laughs> so true. What does that mean? We didn't we didn't figure out that the first time. What are we still doing it for? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> I want to do it one more time. I'll tell him to say it a different way. I can't believe he just did that. What's the that? Oh my God, that you actually got your homework done in time. <laughs> <laughs> 
I love it. <laughs> All right. Any questions? You you got you. I, I, I put you on the hot seat. You can do any questions you want to ask me. Uh, I would love to answer those for you in the in the few minutes we have left. Okay. So, um, I, you kind of you talked about mindset. So tell me what you think mindset is all about and what are the two um, types of mindset? Ah. Uh, that's good. Um, so where I, what I think mindset is, is, is the place where we are in a specific moment in time with where, what we're believing or where we are. Um, so if I am, uh, I'll just take chief in athletics. If, if I'm believing I'm going to um, uh make an Olympic team, that's that's my launching pad. My mindset is my launching pad. Uh, then I believe we go to what, I, what I've been kind of coining as a mind site. So it's the vision of where I desire to be. So I, I might say I want to be, make an Olympic team, but then I have to begin to have the mind site of actually visualizing where I want to be on that metal podium and then backing everything out into my training. What was the second part of your question? It was like, what do you, the, the two what types? Are the two types? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Called, the first one is called fixed and the second one is growth. And I just want to say yeah. to you, yeah. So when you think about fixed, tell me what you think that sounds like. Uh, mindset. It is a mindset, but it's like a mindset where somebody believes within themselves that if there's certain things that should be done, that they're not capable of doing it because they don't believe. They believe they were born this way and that they can't change it. Mm. Isn't that, that isn't that unbelievable? But there's a lot of people like that. So growth is the opposite of that. Yeah. Growth is like, wow, okay, I don't know how to do this, but I honestly believe that if I work harder um, and um, and I believe that I can get this done, guess what? I will I will get it done. It's really interesting when you start thinking about mindset because the mindset, you think that you have the, the power to just put that in your mind and do it and it doesn't work like that. The first thing you do is that you have to know what you truly believe in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's good. Next, you know, here's yeah. next question to you. What's your favorite color? My favorite color? Yes. Uh, well, it, it's purple, but I'm colorblind, so I can't see it, but that's my favorite color. <laughs> It kind of turns out to be blue. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's what I always say. Oh, this looks great, babe. No, it doesn't, she says to me. <laughs> What's your favorite movie? What's your favorite uh, movie? Favorite movie, The Incredibles. Oh, no, no, no. That's not the right one. <laughs> <laughs> How about this? She says it's not the right one. What's so then, okay, okay, what's my favorite movie? Uh Think about someone that um, is really funny. Uh, how about, um, do you know the, the movie, um, um, I'm trying to think, Ma, Ma, Aunt Maid, Maid, M-A-I-D. Maid M -A -I -D. Oh, Made in Manhattan? No. No, 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 no. Tall I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say dodgeball. Wedding Crashers. Come on. Wedding Crashers. <laughs> <laughs> Stop I, this. I was going to say dodgeball. <laughs> That's wall. Yes, now you're on the right tip. There you go. <laughs> That's funny. That was, that was good. That was good. You could dodge a wrench. You could dodge a ball. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about what is in 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 the future for you to take your business to all the things that you're doing. What's that next thing? Because I heard you say television, and I want to say to the audience. I want this guy on my TV show, not just oh my, my show, I want you on my network. So we're going to- I love that. That's, oh my gosh. Wow. I'm, 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 uh, I'm, I'm kind of speechless now as for a speaker. You know, I, I, honestly, you said it when, uh, Shay, when you were talking about building and I, one of the things I wish I would have done faster and I'm glad I did it during, actually during the pandemic and a little bit, well, a little bit before the pandemic was I, I began putting people on the team. Uh, and my wife, who was a flight attendant with Southwest Airlines, um, when the pandemic hit, I was listening to Gary Kelly. So I was, I was eavesdropping in on the conversations because he was having these calls with all of his employees. And mm. he was giving them, he was giving them such great information of what was going on with the company all the time. I mean, he was he was trying, he was over communicating. 
as you were saying, communication, communication. He was over communicating and he was being very forthright in the words that he was saying. It was, it was phenomenal to see. And his actions of what he did actually seeped into me to say, I'm going to build during this time instead of lay people off because that's going to allow me time to think. So as I took that philosophy, I began to build this team of just amazing individuals who are so gifted in what they do. And they have the vision of being able to, you know, our, our whole thing is about uh, helping business professionals amputate their fear, embrace a new normal mind sight, like I say, it's my sight, uh, to, um, um, to hurl their adversity, embrace this new normal mind sight so that they can win the medals in their lives. Uh, yeah. And so they believe in that, right? It's not, I came in and said, this is where we're going. They already had that when they came to me. So the universe was just opening up and gifting me uh, people that were just so brilliant, which allowed me to focus and do what I do best and communicate. Yes. And it, it was so liberating that I'm, now I'm trying to tell everybody that because I, I want to talk myself out of jobs because I don't think I should be the speaker to come in to help your organization. I think you should be the speaker in your organization, Madam CEO, Mr. CEO, to tell the stories that you need to tell in the crisis moments that you have so that your organization doesn't have to wait for me to come in. So, so I wrote a book called 10 Power Stories to Impact Any Leader just for that purpose. Um, so that's that's where I, you know, I kind of see us going. And yeah, of, of course, however we can amplify that message, I'd love to be on uh, your network. That'd be, that'd be absolutely fantastic. Well, we'll talk about that. And you know what you really, it, what you put together, and this is, I think, something everybody should be doing, is that we, I don't know who, how many people like to do puzzles, but their business is all about puzzles. And each yeah. person that came to you that you built your team with is all part of that puzzle. And you yeah. need to keep doing that until you've got that, that, that full, everything and everybody that you need because they need you. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you what. Uh, you're now in my hip pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reaching out to you because uh, you make a lot of business sense, <laughs> uh, but also with the right values behind it. I don't listen to everybody in business. Uh, those that have, a, a, you know, I can tell, listen to you, that you have the right kind of value structure of how to help other people. Uh, so thank you for your gifting. In that area, you know, your like I said, your children are fantastic. Uh, I was not even going to talk about uh, Vince because I want to talk about you, um, <laughs> and because I want to talk about the person that actually made Vince, right? So, because um, uh, yeah, just I thought you would like that one. That's why I said that. Yeah, it was good. It was good. You got it was just kind, of, kind, of, kind of cute. So I really want to just say that you know I want to just uh, end with this as far as myself is concerned. I have great. Um, gratitude and uh, appreciation for being on your show. But I, I want to say to the, the, the people that are listening out there is that what you need to do is take away your fear mm -hmm. and replace it with your imagination. Do you know what your mind is? It is so great. So just use it. Wow. Take away your fear, replace it with imagination. That's great. Exactly. I came out of uh, it's all you need to do let it come let it flow thank you grow rich i think it's the, the imagination that's thing that's the part of the book of thank you grow rich um that is fantastic advice um so wonderful uh we've been talking with the amazing the incredible shay vaughn and what a what a wonderful lovely uh conversation we have had because of course she's lovely and wonderful so thank you so much for gracing us with your presence i hope we can get you back on the show and we'll get the we'll, we'll figure out earlier how to get the camera working uh, because I, you just have such a wealth of knowledge that uh, people need to what I say rewind the tape put the a track in push forward so it goes back to the first part of the a track so you can hear it all over again because this was just a wonderful conversation so thank you for gracing us with your presence and thank you for your kind words blessings bye bye now bye for now all right, ladies and gentlemen, holy cow. Can you believe that? Shayvon, the one and only Shayvon was on our show today. Uh, thank you. I am so grateful, grateful for that, uh, for her being on. All right. That does it for this show for this week on Hurdlers of Adversity, Conversations with Mindset to Mindsight Maximizers. Uh, we're on KPPF Radio, the tactical advantage, now streaming live on podcast channel Podbean. So that's going to be out there. I'll, I'll put a link uh, in the uh 
uh, LinkedIn Live over there. Uh, the book, 10 Power Stories, we talked about that, Impact Any Leader, is still out there on Kindle. And then join our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash amputate fear. And Anais Nin said this, and the day came when the risk to remain tight in a bud was more painful than the risk it took to blossom. Oh, I love that. And as I say, when truth outweighs fear, we commit to a courageous life. So we got some guests that are coming up next week. We'll put that in the chat for you later on. But remember, you are the inspirations. Inspirations are the catalyst to motivation. Motivation in turn causes actions. Actions lead us to transformational results. And those results either re-inspire us or allow other people that are watching the process to catch the vision. My name is John Register saying see you next week back here once again on your favorite live streaming channel. Bye for now.